You probably know what cells are. You and I even started out as one, specifically as a zygote or fertilized egg. We then divided into two cells, then four, and so on. And over time, our cells developed into different tissues and organs that were beginning to develop. This is called differentiation, when cells get jobs when they divide. Enter stem cells, which are just the ones that haven't differentiated yet. They're undifferentiated. Stem cells are also pluripotent, which means that they can change into any biological cell. Skin cells protect your body. Muscle cells expand and contract. Nerve cells send signals, but stem cells don't have a specific job or function, but have the potential to become all of these types of cells, plus the 200 other kinds in your body. Stem cells are kind of like your body's own repair kits. They replace worn out cells in your body when they die. For example, the lining of your intestines is replaced every four days by stem cells in a layer underneath the surface. The cool thing is, they can either become a different cell or stay undifferentiated when they multiply. This is part of how they unlock an entire new world of life sciences. They're changing the way we model disease, the way humans work when we're healthy or not, and even develop special personalized medicine, and even replace lost body parts with their own body parts. Scientists today are closer than ever to this goal of using stem cells to repair damaged organs, which is called regenerative medicine. Stem cells as of now are used to treat blood diseases, such as leukemia, also known as blood cancer. This disease affects your bone marrow, where blood cells are produced. In leukemia, your bone marrow creates an abnormal amount of white blood cells, which crowd out the healthy stem cells. One way to help treat this, in conjunction with other treatment methods that clear out as many cancer cells as possible beforehand, is a stem cell transplant into the bone marrow, which helps create the unique blood cells needed by the patient's own body. There are actually three different types of stem cells that are commonly used for research and medical treatment. Embryonic, somatic, and induced pluripotent stem cells, all categorized based on their potency or likelihood of developing into other cells. Embryonic stem cells, the most potent of the bunch, can develop into any tissue in the body except for the ones in the embryo, because that's where they come from. Makes sense, right? Embryonic stem cells are also the source of most of the controversy pertaining to stem cells. This is because embryonic stem cells come from blastocysts, which are literally just an empty ball of 50 to 150 cells that forms 4 to 5 days after fertilization. You can get embryonic stem cells from the leftovers of an IVF, or in vitro fertilization. IV stands for in vitro, which means outside of body. So outside of body, fertilization. IVFs are sometimes done when a couple has trouble conceiving. For example, if the male has a low sperm count, or if the female has damaged fallopian tubes. How IVFs work is scientists manually mix together a couple eggs with sperm in a dish to encourage fertilization, and then, after letting them sit for a set time, they insert the most promising egg into a uterus if they see signs of fertilization. If they don't, then they have to manually inject the sperm into the eggs. Once it's inserted, the pregnancy hopefully continues business as usual. But how is this relevant to stem cells? Why are they so controversial? Well, the leftover embryos, if they're donated consensually, are ripe for embryonic stem cell harvest. All you have to do is split it open and scrape out the inner cell mass while at the same time killing it. This is highly controversial to say the least. The ethics of both abortion and cloning are put in the spotlight. So for the sake of staying on topic, let's, uh, let's move on. Somatic stem cells, or tissue-specific stem cells, are found in small numbers in most of your body's tissues. Unlike embryonic stem cells, they can only replace the cells of whatever tissue they were found in as they wear out and die, like the intestines from before. Scientists are interested in these types of stem cells because of how they can indefinitely reproduce organs from the tissue they came from, potentially regenerating an entire organ just from a handful of cells. These are also not as controversial as embryonic stem cells because scientists and researchers are satisfied with a small tissue sample of an organ rather than an entire embryo. Induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPSCs, are normal cells in your body that scientists change to behave like embryonic stem cells. iPSCs were discovered in 2006 by Shinya Yamanaka, who showed that by introducing four specific genes with transcription factors, you could transform a skin cell into a pluripotent stem cell. Yamanaka also got the Nobel Prize in 2012, so this discovery was both monumental and recent. However, Despite everything we've covered, stem cells aren't all sunshine and rainbows. There is a risk that is taken when a transplant is made. Potential complications can be fatal. Remember that stem cells can transform into any cell, even harmful ones, which means that you might just get new cancer on top of the one you already had. Your body may also reject the new stem cells, which may result in graft-versus-host disease, or GVHD. With all of this in mind, I hope you now know more about the potential, good or bad, of stem cells.